Welcome to Classic Valley Investors, Microcap Explosions. This is Mariusz Skonieczny. I'm here in the room with Ian and um, the uh, team of geologists. So guys, can you take a minute to Ian, maybe start, talk a little bit about, introduce yourself, everyone. And then maybe Ian, if you could talk about how this group came together and we'll just go from there. Certainly. Thanks, Marius. I'm Ian Graham. I'm the president of Morocco. And uh, we're assembling a geologic team. We're in the process of doing an IP survey today, uh, shortly into a permitting process with the intent of drilling. And so in, in expectation of drilling, in uh, anticipation of processing the IP data, we're assembling a group of people whose uh, resumes I know, that I've worked with previously, and that I know can assist myself, Paul McGuigan, uh, others uh, involved with Oroco technically in staffing up, putting together a drill program, uh, and ensuring that we do all the technical work required to bring me into uh, the company and in relation to the Santo Tomas project, a current and compliant mineral resource with all the information that we're going to need to uh, interest other parties in the project and be able to fully describe the Santo Tomas project in technical terms. So I have previously worked with James and I'll have James introduce himself shortly. And uh, I've also worked with the others in various capacities, and they'll be able to perhaps explain their roles in, in the project shortly. Sure. So I'm James Rogers. I'm CEO of Longford Exploration. And the purpose of this trip is to become familiar with the logistics, uh, all the infrastructure that's been established and is available to us in order to start planning uh, and executing as he has described, a uh, drill program on the results of the historic work that's been done here, as well as the ongoing 3D IP surveys. So uh, this is really our first trip on the ground, and we're becoming familiar with the area of the project and everything that we're going to need to manage what will uh, grow into a multi-drill program over the next uh, coming months. So now uh, we've got Rory Kudwagnu, uh, who can introduce himself. I am. Or uh, work, working with Longford and uh, basically trying to bring the the considerations on what would go into the PEA and the PFS and FS programs and making sure that we, as a team, we build all the right protocols and have the right techniques and the right experts for the given, given disciplines such as resource estimation or uh, geotechnical or environmental and just sort of Helping, helping the team coordinate it because it is a, a big undertaking. There are a lot of moving pieces. Uh, once you're up and rolling and drilling, they move quite quickly. So having, having a, a good foundation, both mapped out on how to do it, and then to support uh, the team as, as they're executing. Uh, so that's sort of the role. I'm gonna play, I've done, done it a few times now, and um, continue to be evaluating other companies and, and the value of their projects from, from that uh, either acquisition lens or, or um, even just uh, from a due diligence investment lens. So that's what I'm hoping to bring. I'm Ryan Pursluit. My background is in exploration geology. I've been working with Longford for three years now in a variety of programs across Canada from grassroots to drill programs. and. Uh, as Rory mentioned, there's a lot of technical components to a project like this, and I'll be acting as project manager on the ground here to make sure that all that data is collected properly and filtered up back to Vancouver. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now that you guys um, have been on the property, uh, learned a little bit about it from seeing it uh, with your eyes, but also looking at some of the data that has been provided to you, can you just talk about how what makes this project interesting to work on? Some of you know some of the characteristics of this project. Well, I mean, obviously, the the, the enticing component is uh, aspects of the mineralized system are, are pretty well understood. You know, where 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 uh, the you know the, the root of the drilling has defined a good system to start building on uh, surface exposure. Uh, particularly, you know, around around the, the the roadway up and through the the north 
the North area of the deposit is quite striking, and, and being able to sort of put your put yourself in the the mineralized system and sort of the geologic models we like to impose, and start thinking about where the mineralized trends can go and, and, and how the different alteration zones play into each other. It's uh, it's actually pretty exciting to have a project that has as much development as it does, but still as much opportunity also to be un un unveiled as we go through this project. So it's pretty neat that way. And I, then, I think in a sense, Mariusz is asking the, uh, the billing that I gave the project to you guys and some of the descriptions I used to see if I could excite you, entice you to be part of it, or are they, have you had some degree of corroboration with what I've said when you've visited the project on the ground? And I think James, you know, I've spoken to you about it on a number of occasions. Does yeah. it, it, you know, represent so, what we've discussed? I think, I think the discussions that we've had is, you know, there's a uh, sizable exploration target that has size and scale potential uh, to uh, be a uh, world-class copper project if uh, if we can execute and pull the historic data and collect new information to back that up into the resource and into the PEA levels. So uh, going on the project yesterday and seeing the extent of uh, drilling network and having reviewed and looked at the historic data, uh, we can certainly see there's a, that scale potential within the project um, as well as uh, alteration and all the copper mineralization or at least some copper mineralization that we're seeing on surface. Uh, so it certainly is a large a large system and it's a matter of unwrapping that and uh, understanding uh, how that forms into what will hopefully become a uh, measurement indicated deposit in the future. Good. Yeah. Okay. You know, I think Mariusz and we've discussed with your investor base uh, you know, in one of the, the, the forums you've hosted before, what we see as the high points uh, of the project. And essentially having the team here to sort of review the historical work, the way we've projected it uh, publicly and the way we're approaching it internally in order to evaluate and assess it has been really important for me to have uh, essentially fresh eyes on the project uh, we're obviously in the process at the moment of, of socializing the project and, and having these gentlemen work on it. Um, but so far, I think we're on track uh, and certainly we've had some, I would say, fairly uh, animated discussions over the last 48 hours. Um, but really they're all around how we approach uh, the, the near-term evaluation work, how the IP is going to feed into planning, how the infrastructure in the district is going to play into the drill planning and all the work that we intend to uh, do to fully scope the project. So. You know, Ian, when um, you were not one of the founders of the company and you came on board and what was what was uh, the determining factor that made you sold on this property? That's a great question, Marish. I'm not sure there's just one, but uh, I think in, in the end, uh, the, the clear recognition that this is a project of merit that is in uh, a district with unbelievable mining support infrastructure. So it's a low elevation porphyry, uh, it has a compelling uh, geometry in terms of how it's disposed on the ground for strip. There's rail, power, water, uh, natural gas, uh, just, just a remarkable confluence of support infrastructure that sits around this project. And that allowed me, I guess, as I began to understand the resource a little better, um, to recognize that this is a project where uh, the economics will be readily supported by infrastructure, by you know being ex extant in a in a in a an environment where mining in, in Mexico is a well supported industry. Um, so you know I was attracted to the project. I, I guess in some respects by a view that there would be a path to development that would not encounter the resistance that a number of other projects tend to encounter. So, uh, you know, I think uh, I certainly didn't come to that instantly. It was an evolution of, 
but beginning to understand the project. And then uh, from, the, from you guys, from the geological point of view, uh, how do you view the infrastructure? And can you just talk a little bit about the importance of having the right infrastructure surrounding the project? Well, it's a big deal of it's a road rate to the projects they do begin with. A lot of projects, you know, are, are uh, um, they have a hard time. You need, you need to have a road to go there, and that goes, can cost millions and millions of dollars. And so that's a cost savings right there. And, you know, logistics, maybe it's a lot easier to have a road for logistics as well. Like yeah, it's close to a workforce as well. You've got uh, a number of cities in the valley within, you know, a commutable distance to be able to supply. Uh, local labor and uh, a workforce, especially on uh, uh, fabrication and construction sides of things. So that's that's important. Uh, there is power generation and proximally or not far away from the deep ports. So all of these uh, all of these infrastructure uh, all of the established infrastructure uh, will have considerations or at least uh, have an effect on how the economics of the project may look at a later point. And having a lot of the uh, key ingredients already established will certainly uh, have a positive effect on uh, how you approach the development of a project like this. Being, being able to answer the questions more readily because of the proximity of the infrastructure mm -hmm. makes, makes the project more tangible to everyone involved, uh, be it the engineers, the investment community, us in terms of our logistics, even, even in the development stage, but actually when it comes to explaining this in, in, a, in a PEA or a PFS or FS study, and people being able to read it and be like, yep, there's a hydro dam there, yep, there's a power line there, there's new infrastructure with the natural gas, okay, this makes sense. Whereas, you know, I've worked on projects where it's, well, we need to build a 185 kilometer road. I've, I've looked at uh, a number of projects where it's like, well, we're just waiting on the government to do this thing. You know, being able to, to, to get past those steps rapidly and readily and at this stage of the project where where we are doing these initial planning stages of, of how do we envision this project coming together in the, in the next 24 months it's really great to just be able to say well we're going to improve this road and we're going to work with the community and do this sort of development being able to say that right away is readily after such a short trip here and, and with uh, Oroko's uh, groundwork it's huge. It, it really covers off a lot of thinking that would take a lot of time in other situations. Now, that doesn't make those other situations negative. It just means we can we can move past those those considerations readily and rapidly. Focus on geology. Yeah. So, if you have good infrastructure, a, a lower grade in one location might be hugely profitable and a higher grade in another location might not be profitable simply because of the infrastructure. Okay. Am I right? Could, could you guys elaborate on this a little bit? Remote, remote projects uh, in areas without in infrastructure can attract way higher energy generation costs, transport costs, uh, in, you know, site build-out costs. So the cost of mining uh, a higher grade deposit may exceed the ability of the deposit to carry those costs. Whereas, you may have a slightly lower grade deposit in another location, but the attendant mining costs are so substantially lower that you can, process, you can mine that lower grade deposit at a significant profit margin. So, so really, uh, a direct comparison of size and grade really cannot be done independent of the location of the, of, of the occurrence. And it's all about location, particularly when you start talking about bulk um, deposits, very large, lower grade situations. Uh, remote conditions make those deposits very difficult to build, whereas if they're in well-established mining uh, districts and with strong infrastructure, access to ports, power, rail, etc. Um, those projects can become very compelling, very economically worthwhile, um, largely as a result of the location. And it's it's definitely one of the you know key buckets of of sliding scale.
cost versus product that, that goes into evaluating any deposit. And you know, being again, being able to already tick a number of these boxes very quickly and have comfort around what we'd be looking at in, in what is a large a large component of cost of operations, it does build that comfort that that would change uh, if it was located somewhere else or if it was higher grade, but it didn't matter because it was located so much more difficult to, to access. And, and that's that's the consideration people need to have when they're looking at a project. It can't just be the headline. I mean, the headline's great in the discovery phase. You drill a great hole and it's a great hole and then you go, well, rule of thumb, this, this looks like it could be economic. That's a starting point. And this project has gone through that and it's into that bigger picture where you know, infrastructure and, and, and logistics and shipping costs, that's a big bucket. Uh, metallurgy is a big bucket, uh, ground stability and, and pit slope design. And it really does shift away from being a, a project that can be a, just snippets and just headlines. And it's into, there, there are the details. And that's why, you know, instead of it being one, one or two technical people, like there's the four of us, and then there's gonna be a lot more, all considering these factors, because there is a lot that plays in, and all of them are sliding scale. Well, we get recovery, but the residency time in the mill is longer, or it is it is lower recovery, but we can throughput the rock faster, and, and these are things that we're going to be considering here. And so it's it's almost a disservice to the investor to just grab the headline and not always think through what it means. I mean, there are rule of thumb, and that's where you start, and that's where Ian started, that's where we all started, but you, you do need to take that bit more time and think a little bit more on it. And uh, I think that's where you know investors can be rewarded by by just committing a little bit more contemplation uh, to some of these projects. And I think we see that in, in this in this market today, where a number of projects that haven't had the love in the past are starting to see that now because people are have been taking the time over the last little while and, and really uh, looking a little bit deeper than than what was the last real result, what what was the last. Uh, headline on it, what was the last spin from a newsletter writer, it's what is it, what was the report, where is the opportunity. So I think, I think the infrastructure is a perfect example of that sliding scale that goes into these at development stage projects. That's right. And I think, you know, the trade-offs that, that need to be examined and are part of a process of evaluation of a project we're launching into and the purpose of gathering the group. Uh, Marish very much is to, from a high level, begin to trace where we need to go in terms of the, all the studies, the trade-off inputs that we need for to to fully comprehend the opportunities for Santa Tomas. Uh, well, but to return to your first question, you know what might attract me now? I think what attracts me to the project now that I've sort of lived with it a little longer is the massive optionality uh, that exists around. Uh, the, the, the deposit and that is largely constrained by the situation we find it in low elevation, close to infrastructure with the necessary resources, people resources, water resources, etc. required to build a large mining project. So that's why I find it particularly compelling today. Okay, um, well I think that's a very, uh, very well uh, um, ending comment. Now, is there anything else that any of you might want to say that I didn't have a chance to ask you that you, you would like to share about this project? Sure. We're going to have some fun putting this together. It's a, a remarkable opportunity and for us as technical people to, to have opportunities to assemble teams of people with a broad range of skills to contribute to a vision of how the project might be in the future uh, provides us with a, you know, a lot of professional uh, joy and reward and, and we get to debate and, and, and uh, articulate our visions and bring that all together, coalesce it and move it forward into a future potential project. And hopefully uh, through yourself and others we can continue to articulate to the investors, to the market. Uh, the vision as it evolves for us. So, so you know, really appreciate you taking the time to assemble us and uh, and ask us a few probing questions and 
hopefully we can continue in this vein in the future. All right. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.